I'm a banana. Or, I may as well be, for I woke up and decided it's time to pick up my controller once more and face a challenge I've already attempted. Yes, that's right. Back in March of 2020, I had in fact already started this journey, having failed to conquer my quest. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again, ready to fully accomplish my dream. Beating Super Mario Odyssey with absolutely zero coins. Now, before I started this project, I genuinely had no idea whether it was even possible. I had avoided any prior research, and hell, I'm only doing this because my girlfriend suggested it to me probably about a year ago. Why didn't you suggest for me to get a job instead? So, just before we jump in, let me lay the ground rules. Rule number one is I cannot collect any coin of any variant, which includes the world exclusive ones. Rule number two is I cannot collect any coins. Rule number two is if I do collect a coin, I must load back to the previous save, whenever that may be. And rule number three, to beat the game, I must defeat Bowser after collecting 124 moons. The darker side of the moon is not included. And with that, I suppose we're ready to jump in. In the skies above Peach's castle, Mario and Bowser play a wicked game of catch. Mario is not very good at it. I'm not saying the princess has a daddy kink, but she does not really look all that worried. Uh oh, is is he dead? I think he might be dead. Oh no, off he goes. But anyway, enough waffling. I thought it'd be worth standing here that I am by no means any good at Mario Odyssey. I'm not a speedrunner, I do not play regularly, and in fact, other than the one attempt I had at this, I've not even really played since launch. So I'm going into this as low level, and in the same sense that if you attempted this at home. So that's how you know I'm gonna be good. Oh yes, I'm gonna shit on your face, Mario. So actually there's not much to say about this world really. There aren't really any challenging jumps to make, and everything is relatively straightforward, whether that's avoiding coins or even playing it normally. It is important to avoid jumping on enemies though, because it will give me a coin, hence why I try to avoid them there. In case you want to prove I'm bad at the game, look no further ladies and gentlemen. After that, it is time for this world's boss. And as long as you jump away after you hit him, there really isn't any trouble here at all. It's a straightforward level, and a nice tutorial and start for the game. Maybe it'll be easy after all. So we shoot away into the distance with so far zero resets. Cascade Kingdom. I'm expecting a little bit of a challenge here, but nothing out of the ordinary. He must... collect himself? Looks like those vibrations got to him. Playing this level actually reminds me of when I first got the game. For whatever reason, this was when the excitement set in the most for me, I think. I mean, just look how beautiful it is. We start off in this one area with a chain chomp. But we gotta be careful, because I believe if we smash any of these other rocks, we'll end up getting coins from them. A lot of objects and enemies produce coins, so we need to be really smart in how we go about it. I've never really thought about it before. But are these animals? Are they mechanical? Do they have a beating heart? Do they have feelings? What do they feel when Mario takes over? Is it ethical for him to do so and smash them into the walls? Oh god. Mario, you're a monster. Also it gave me a coin trying to go for the moon behind the wall. That's my first reset. Lucky for us, a lot of the rocks required to continue the story don't even produce coins. It's almost like they did on purpose. It's kind of funny, really. Oh, I hate these 2D sections. It's where the game falls flat. I do need to be really careful in these parts, though. There's so many enemies and bricks. Who knows what could give us a coin? That's fucking bullshit. I'll tell you what I'll do on this attempt, though. I'll do the exact same thing while also stomping on the Goomba. Perfect. Let's just say screw it and go to the final boss. And again, nothing too shabby here. You just need to avoid the coin she drops, and that's that. After that, I just need to pick up the one moon up here, and that's the entire kingdom done. Not too bad, but a few mistakes made. How fucking dare you interrupt this, Neko? <laughs> Why does Mario look like he's in prison in that shot? As you've no doubt pieced together, it's entirely covered in sand. I don't like sand. 
It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. The Sand Kingdom is one which gives me slight anxiety, simply down to how large and vast it is. Yes, that great success means that coins should largely be avoidable, but finding moons on the other hand may be a larger challenge, especially since we have to completely avoid going to the top of the tower. There are actually completely unavoidable coins on the way, so we have to find every single one of our moons without doing any of the main story. Wish me luck. This is actually the last level I did when I attempted it before too, which is pretty sad considering how short I am into this video. Oh boy, this is going to be a long one, isn't it? Huh, I wonder if there's anything cool up this fountain. Oh. Luckily there's a few moons early in this town area, so it's really not too much of a problem. Thank god. I remember exactly where the moon is in this room. Shit. You see, even really simple things like hitting this bloody potted plant is enough to give me a coin. What the fuck? It even autosaved? One problem I think that's going to occur a lot is the annoying autosave system, where if you hit a flag, it autosaves. If you hit a moon, it autosaves. Basically, if you get either of these things and accidentally hit a coin while you do, that's an RIP, motherfucker. Luckily, I did make a backup save in case it happens, and I recommend everyone else does that too. After another coin and Mario looking like he snorted too much pepper, it was time for the circle game. Here we go! Look, before you ask me why the fuck my circle is three-dimensional, it's because I was worried the bush would give me a coin. Talking of bush giving coin, visit my OnlyFans. Okay, so if I do anything here, I need to make sure I don't dismount and... I'm going to set fire to all my socks. If a chastity belt exists in the world of Mario Odyssey, I'm pretty sure this is it. And at the end of the level, I just waited out for the seeds to grow as I did a few chores. It's three free moons, so I think it's worth it. I also find it kind of funny how the boss is kind of just like, Well, see ya! <laughs> so Wooded Kingdom is actually the first of the brand new content on the channel. I never did this before, so from here on out, I'm going in completely blind. And it's worth noting that while I'll be giving general outlines of the level, I won't be going into intense depth about everything that happened. I mean, even Sand Kingdom took me 50 minutes alone. It was just at this moment that I realized just how beautiful Mario's eyes truly are. Ah, the old pipe. I remember exactly where this goes. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it must be the other one. What? 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 I genuinely tried them all but one. I want the world to know it took roughly two and a half minutes to get this right. See, and you all thought I was crazy when I was trying to avoid bush earlier. It's fun just how off the beaten path you can go. Like I swear, I never even went this way before either. I know it's not much, but the fact that you can always keep finding new things like this is honestly a huge credit to the game design. <laughs> Stum idiot just got a coin. Wait, what? Why is he still going? Why is he? Uh oh. So you want to know what's worse? After getting the coin, I then decide to shave over the backup shave. And right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the moment I realize where I load the other save and see that I am indeed a fucking moron. That's the face of a defeated man. A little bit under two hours it took to get me to this point. And there it goes, just like that. Now, I think most people would just accept defeat. They'd lay down their Joy-Cons and say, nay, the madness is not worth it. But I say... How can you create madness inside the already mad? So yes, back to the beginning I went. Fortunate for me, although by no means I am a speedrunner, I have seen one or two in my time to know the secrets. I may have fucked up, Ed. What I'm going to do to make sure we never have to restart the game again is to have a safe save. Where we save it at the beginning of every level and not fucking touch it until I'm done. This game's bullshit. I don't want to talk about it. What the fuck, man? It's perfect! 
All right, so we made it back to the Wooded Kingdom and hopefully with the backup save, it should all be plain sailing from here. I thought I should start here since I at least remember which of the pipes I need to go through. Okay, first one was left. What? So it turns out they don't actually even stay the same, which is kind of hilarious, except for the fact that it genuinely took me going through every single pipe to find the correct route. I will never get that time back. But anyway, I continued on, got the nut, and got to the piranha plant. Luckily, because I guess it's a stronger enemy, it only gives coins in a circle. So even if you do kill it, it won't automatically give you the one singular row coin. There's a few moons on the way over to the boss. So we collect them, and then it's showtime. The most disappointing thing with this game is definitely the boss battles. They're so mind-numbingly easy, which is also why I died. Thankfully after that, we only need one more moon. So I collect the easiest one I can find, and that's Wooded Kingdom done. So there we are. Not a whole lot to it, really. After Sand Kingdom, there tends to be a whole lot less moons, so a lot of the worlds feel a lot shorter in comparison. Alright, next up is the Lake Kingdom. And to be honest with you, with the underwater mechanics, I was worried about this. And let me tell you, this one was really, really easy. Firstly, you only need 8 moons, which is such a piddly small amount anyway. There really wasn't all that much to say about this one either. I did the underwater musical notes, I did this sick jump which got me up here. I could even completely avoid going that way by jumping over the first wall effortlessly. Uh oh, I hope I don't need that air bubble. Alright, the final shard is just on the other side of these boxes. I feel like the seaweed is mocking me. I kind of just ran around finding obvious moons. Nothing challenging here at all. I didn't even do the boss fight. It took me 20 minutes to beat this kingdom. And even that only took so long because I kept trying to get the moon part behind the boxes. I'd even go far to say this level was a pleasant experience. I see that next is Metro Kingdom. I tell you what, if there's a level I'm most nervous about, it's definitely that one. Uh oh, something's happening. I'm truly getting lost in those eyes of his. Even while ignoring his nose looking like a boop. Oh my god, it's... it's... Bowser has beautiful eyes too? Whenever I see this level, it without fail reminds me of when Twitch played Mario Odyssey. And I kept getting him to jump off. <laughs> I got timed out. It was mean, but it was so fucking funny. Okay, editor, be sure to cut that part out. Holy shit. <laughs> Those plants are beautiful. I always thought it was cool that this boss fight was early on. I always thought it was kind of really creative and, 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 a, nice, and a nice way to warm up for later. Anyway, that's the Bowser fight done and dusted. Let's move on. Lost Kingdom, you see. I don't remember this world very well. And also, it turns out, I am like a magpie. Because I seriously feel the need to keep going for this key and fucking dying. The world starts off and it's meant to be like, ooh, spooky, because Mario loses his hat. But you get it back so fucking quick that it makes absolutely zero difference. So like, what's the point? I made a mistake here of going into this platform, trying to get into the cage. It's, it's things like that where you know there's bound to be a risk of getting coins, so I'm not really sure why I tried. Even with Cappy throws, he can pick up coins so easily. I feel like it was this world specifically where I really started to learn the ropes. There's a moon in that tree. And I think I'm compelled to get it. I wonder if these are just lumps of cheese. This level is incredibly condensed, so I feel like I really need to be on my toes much more than the previous stages. Uh oh. Oop. Oh, oh my. Yeah. That was possibly the greatest save known to man. Oh, tits. Oh, this absolutely has to be a moon. Just look at this shit. Hi, Nintendo. Yeah, I'd like to speak to your manager, please. This entire final climb had some incredibly fun and tight platforming, honestly. And with the way Mario controls, it feels fantastic. Even when a mistake is made, it never ever feels like the game's fault, only mine. The way Mario controls in a 3D plane is truly extraordinary. And even if for some reason the 3D games aren't for you, even you must admit the controls are some of the best in gaming. Come here, buddy. Come on. 
Uh oh. All right, everyone. It's time. It's time to face what I feared the most. My mother. It's also time to face Metro Kingdom. From the very start, I knew if there was any kingdom that would give me trouble, it would absolutely be Metro Kingdom. And, well, let's see how we do. So we start off with Metro Kingdom, rain pouring down, the kingdom under attack. And with Mario over here looking like the missing Link. But how was the actual level? Well, let me show you. This level, with absolutely zero doubt, is the hardest level in the game. I had to reset so many times, it was completely trial and error. But let me tell you, it ain't impossible. More than anything, you have to play it smart. You need to have full awareness at all times. Think back to that one time in a cold December evening where you accidentally shot yourself at the library when you were a little bit older than you should have been. Yes, eye zooming everywhere, looking for an exit, trying not to make eye contact. Look, it wasn't my fault, okay? Ugh, oh, Jesus. Reset, reset, reset. Boxes? Coin. Shooting an enemy? Coin. Certain parts of the environment? Coin. You have to be so, so precise. So then... Hey everyone, how's it going? Turbo the Gamer here. Not to be confused with Turbo, he's the one who's friends with that speedrunner who cheated, which everyone seems to casually forget about despite being a mockery to the entire speedrunning community, which is such a cool community, but anyway, so. Here we are making our way around the track slowly, and judging by that stop sign, we are going the wrong way through the street. But, I guess Mario has a disregard for rules. Must stem from jealousy of Luigi's lavish lifestyle. That and a shroom addiction. All right, we're close. All we have to do now is make sure those maggots do not get shot. Uh, maggots? Just a little bit of the classic Nintendo magic. All right, here we go. We're close. <laughs> Next time is the one. Except it wasn't. Shit in my shoe. But now I'm losing my absolute mind. But I know this is doable. I was so close before, and what made me lose was running over a fucking poster on a wall. I can do it. I will do it. Okay, so I make it through the first area with no problem at all. I just time the shots and make my way around slowly. Bit like a slug. Here I begin to sacrifice Cappy to the bullets. Can we please get an RIP Cappy in the comments? Thank you. And also, I will take over from the tank just because there's one less enemy I have to deal with. Slowly we are making our way forward. Maybe this one can really be the one. The concentration it took me to focus on this was immense. I need to make sure I avoid the flies and, of course, avoid the posters. Okay, so I managed to do this bit, but I need to hope that I don't accidentally make anything get shot. Alright, so I just need to avoid the muffin, go around him, and... Oh my god, I've actually done it! I've actually done it. I genuinely did not think I was going to be able to do that. I could cry, but unfortunately not tears of joy, because I knew what was to come. So far so good, nothing absolutely major happening until... So I thought, okay, let's wait it out and see what happens and try and come up with a plan. Except I can't, because I get a coin anyway somehow. If I thought the last section was bad, that was nothing in comparison to this. But at least I knew that if I got past this part without the tanks, it would get easier, right? WRONG! The worst part is, is that it felt so inconsistent. Like right here, the cars clearly blew up again, so why didn't I get a coin? Not that I'm complaining, I just don't get why. The only thing I can do, the only thing I can suggest, is to try and work out what gives you coins and what doesn't. Because if you have a rough idea, at the very least, you can know to avoid them. But even then, Nothing ever seemed to work. I figured out that if I can just touch the flag, then maybe, just maybe, I'll get lucky and make it. But unfortunately, the game gave me a fat old middle finger and said no. But then, against all odds, I was able to hit the checkpoint and get the save. I had done it. Somehow, I had managed to get this section done. I kid you not, I spent 25 minutes getting constant resets on this one part. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you actually consider how small the distance is from here to there, that's a large number. 
Especially since it would actually take you around 30 seconds if you just played it properly. But now, there's a brand new joy. Because I'm still in the exact same area. I, tr I tried wiping out the tanks again, but I knew there was no chance that was going to happen. So I had to just quickly climb up these steps, which wouldn't be an issue if they weren't absolutely drenched in coins. And while it did take me a few resets to climb up there, eventually I got the hand of the timings, and I got up with not really any problems. It's where I'd like to credit the flexibility of Mario's movements once more, because if it wasn't for how well designed this game is, I would never have been able to make it. So, after all that, what comes next? Well, after Goomba Genocide, we climb up, hit the new checkpoint, and get inside the building. Now, here's a fun fact. Despite all I went through, this is actually the part I expected to be challenging. This is where I thought the battle would begin, ignoring all the other parts. And this is an hour into the recording. And this is just the night section of Metro Kingdom. Now, I will say straight out the gate that this part was kind of fun. Like, it didn't give me a hernia like the other parts did. But I stand by that really, there's only one thing that makes this part challenging. And that's the Goombas. Yes, the poses are annoying, but they are largely avoidable. Except for the fact that I was so tilted, so I was more likely to make sloppy mistakes here. But these little Goombas, these little buggers, as far as I know, there is no way to get rid of them without getting a coin. So you have to go through all this entire portion while completely avoiding every Goomba in sight. The worst ones by far though are these elevator ones. They cause me to lose more time than I would ever care to admit. Sometimes I would get lucky and largely avoid them, but other times I just couldn't seem to. I even tried using Mara's fat head to block them on the other elevator to no avail. And talking to Mara's fat head, I don't think there's much going on inside it, considering for how for some reason instead of grabbing the side, he decided to show us his new magic trick of magnetism and pick up a golden, shiny, infuriating coin. <sighs> I will say that once you're able to get up to this part, dodging coins is a breeze. As far as I know, the exit is just around the corner. We're so, so close now. So how about I launch myself from this platform to skip to the other side? Mario, I'm going to turn you into soup and drink it up my ass. Alright, here we go. We are nearly there. We have got this. <laughs> I want my mommy. I'm not saying he's not had practice, but damn, that boy walks that pole. Okay, and it's a perfect landing. He is off. He is dodging all the flies. Okay, I will damage boost here just for the sake of it, not worth the risk. Alright, I need to be careful to mind those coins. Hell yes. Okay. Dive it over. Yes. Yes, oh my god. I did it. I actually fucking did it. I, I think that may have been the hardest part I'll have to do. And I, and, I, and I just went and did it. I can't believe it. An hour and 40 minutes it took me to get to this bit. Oh my god. Alright, everyone. And now... And now it's boss time. I'm gonna kick your ass and it's gonna feel so good. Just you wait, boy. You just need to line this up, this shot. And... That gave me a coin? What is this? Is this impossible? Is this actually impossible? Can I not do it? No, no, let me try again. Another? No, I don't understand. Is this where the run ends? Did I do all that for nothing? I think it's because it's destroying that other tank, I believe. But I have no idea if there's a way around that. I'm genuinely so defeated. Fuck. After all that, after this long journey, I think it's time to pack our bags and to go home. I do have one idea. One singular idea, which may or may not work. Let's give it a go. If I jump out this tank, it might despawn. It works, it actually works. Oh, right, okay, it's time for you to die, big boy. Here we go. And ladies and gentlemen, we got him. That was one of the hardest challenges in gaming. That truly tested my patience like not much else. But after two hours on just Night Metro, we have finally, finally done it. And let me tell you, something like that, that changes the man. You don't come out the way you came in.
All right, the good news is that if I was a gambling man, that would have probably been the trickiest part in the game. The bad news is, we're probably only halfway through, so who the fuck really knows? But regardless, I haven't been this happy to see a city in daytime since I asked for that person on the street corner for a Big Mac. Turns out it was the wrong kind of takeaway. I just don't get why I said eat out. Anyway, so I really don't think this level will be too bad as there are a lot of moons scattered around everywhere. Plus, while the level is condensed, for the most part there's many different routes and methods for getting around. I really think this will be fine. Saying that, you can tell this is a city as some sick fuck managed to get their seed all over the floor. This is a public park and that parrot is very easily influenced. This isn't the first time a woman kept yelling faster at me. Also, Rupp was involved then too. Although normally they want that forgiving. One thing you do have to be careful of though, and that's accidentally hitting random objects. I tried to get on that moped, and instead it just ended up giving me a coin. I have no idea what's up with that man. But he is the reason I avoid cities. Wait. He's gone? I don't know if it's the air pollution or the fumes or something in the water, but I but think I, I, might, I, be I might be tripping, tripping, my tripping my dude. My dude. Also, I never noticed until now, but I couldn't work out how to control the car. I thought I had to capture it, so I just ignored the dude. I, I'm such a dumbass. If I get any moons here today, I have to get the one from jumping a hundred times. I've genuinely never been able to do it before. Come on, Mario. Your feet may be as large as your legs, but we're counting on you. Use those Italian knees. This is a public service announcement. There is a strange individual approaching men on benches with his hands drenched in seed. Proceed with caution. He carries it so proudly. Must be a European thing. For whatever reason, at this point, I think I want to morph the challenge. I tried sneaking past this coin, but there was no way it was ever going to work. Mario watches the incoming crowd, noticing how none of them looked like he did. Wondering why he looked so different, he just couldn't figure it out. But then, it came. Bowser probably impregnated his mother. Oh shit, there's no chance I'm going to be able to get through this without getting a coin. So anyway... Whoopsie! Oh, thank god, it's just a heart. Uh-oh. My favorite thing about this game is how I still find new rooms I've never been in. Sure, it's only a musical note room, but I swear in my life I've never seen this before. Alright, here we go. Plumber boy in action. Skipping rope master. Up, 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 up. Ugh, oh, so close. Alright, this is all or nothing. Let's -a go. Skipping ropes always remind me of when I was a young boy. Back when we had sports days at school. Because I was, well, me, I always got forced into doing the shitty event that all the weird kids had to do when they weren't good enough for anything else. And it was called the Agility Run. Even the name says it all. And I kid you not, I was so bad at it, I literally couldn't get past it. It got to the point where the teacher had to pity me and just tell me to move on to the next part of the challenge. Definitely a high point for me. He's so close to hitting that 100 jump challenge. Is he going to do it? 93, 95, 97, 99, 100. Mario has actually gone and proved himself. Alright boys, time for the final moon. It's a shitting tree! And so, after including Night Metro Kingdom, I have been here for two and a half hours. I think that's enough to want to call it a day here. That's the funniest joke I've ever heard. Onward to Snow Kingdom, and truthfully, this is one of the ones I remember the very least. I know one single part of it. And can I say, these teasers give me more fear than I could describe. But I do think this will be a breeze compared to Metro Kingdom. Or maybe I'll be snowed under. Or maybe. Honestly, there's not much to say about this one. Mario breaks into the home of these poor sorts. But what I want to know is, where the hell are they getting their first one for their coats? Oh no. Oh. Maybe it's their friends. Maybe it's the mustache of the last plumber who came here. Has anyone seen Luigi? 
Wario? Waluigi? Mario, run! There was a scary bit, though, with a bunch of coins. <sighs> I accidentally ran straight into one. The platforming here was fun, though, since you had to be mindful of when you activated the enemies, while also being careful about the coins on the floor. But nothing challenging, honestly. So we went from room to room to get to the only real standout part of the level. In terms of quality worlds, I do think this is probably one of the weaker ones, but it's worth it for the race. It isn't hard, but the movement is so fun. And just look how adorable the emblem is for it. But that gave us enough moons, so we set forth to our next kingdom. Despite Metro Kingdom being long behind us, for some reason, I'm a little nervous for this one too. Maybe it's negative association from me having anything but a rippling beach bot. But I just have a bad feeling that there'll be some sneaky coins. Time shall tell. Starting off, we begin in this area largely covered by cloud. Which is already nerve wracking enough as it's so much harder to tell when I might run into any coins. So I just skip the challenging parts by jumping over them anyway. My fear is that if I hit one of the bells, it could kill some of the punk hogs over here. Seriously, if Sonic had a detest for governmental power, these would be him. Gotta go yell expletives! Seriously, Sega, please make Sonic the PG punk. D DM me. Oh, by the way, despite it being a bad idea, I hit the bell anyway. Ended as well as you would imagine. It's kind of weird, honestly. I get these are smaller levels compared to something like the Sand Kingdom, but it just feels like I need such a small amount of moons. Oh god. Do I really want to risk it? It's such a wild guess whether it be coins or not. Bye bye. Maybe it's just where I thought the last one was. <laughs> Holy shit. It actually was too. Alright, here's a classic Nintendo game for kids. All I have to do is hit them in the correct order. One. Oh no. Alright, it's rocket time, baby. I'm back for revenge and no one will stop me. Honestly, you can even see the platform, so I may as well just damage boost through it. Really expected this to be harder, not gonna lie. I have no idea why. I'm so desperate to get up here like this. Plus, after like 5 minutes, I didn't even make it. Even after getting up here, I still feel the need to take the ridiculously hard route. I think Metro Kingdom hurt me somehow. Maybe I just like the pain. Oh yeah. Turns out that kingdom was really easy, and even the coins I got, they were very easily avoidable. Really nothing to worry about there. Next up is Luncheon Kingdom. And maybe I'm going crazy, but doesn't it look like the moon is getting closer and closer? Now, if there was a level I remembered the least, it would definitely be Snow Kingdom, without a doubt. But in the runners up spot, it would definitely be Luncheon. Which is sad. Because there's usually something unforgettable about luncheon. For an unforgettable luncheon. I have a bad feeling this might not be as simple as I thought it would be. So, uh... Did I eat Modi Spam again, or am I watching a muffin repeatedly try and cross a strange pink liquid with a piece of sweet corn? Wait, no, I did LSD. Next up, we have a boss. And honestly, it's a genuine shame just how easy these bosses are. Especially since we're getting towards the end of the game at this point. Well... Disregarding the fact I have the depth perception of a lump of cheddar cheese. That little birdie's looking for some meat! This bonus room is going to be hard, because I'm pretty sure... Oops. This bonus room's going to be hard, because I'm pretty sure that if I attempt to take out the flowers, I will end up getting a coin. So I have to do this without getting a single enemy. The good news is, at least, even if I do die, I do keep the moon shot, so the consequence of the falling in the goop is very small. One concern I did have here, though, is the fact that to continue further into the level, I need to find a switch to deactivate the barrier. But I'm sure that won't cause any problems in the future. Right, guys? Right. Let me tell you, this bonus room looks absolutely terrifying at first glance, but really isn't so bad. And it's really satisfying avoiding all the coins. And the fact that Mario can take over forks really makes me question life. In a nice and existentialist kind of way. I'm genuinely not sure how I'm supposed to climb up here. But Mario can climb so unbelievably high that it's not really a problem anyway. Seriously, having good control of Mario is an absolute lifesaver on so many levels. 
So, this is where I begin to run out of moons and realize I need to attempt to get the switch. Wherever that may be, and let me tell you, that is definitely no easy task. Attempting to smash the path grants you coins. And even some of these blocks of fucking cheese will give you coins. I eventually walked out where the switch was. But even then, getting him to throw where I wanted to was a near impossible task. I genuinely thought it was going to be impossible, so I had a little think. And then, I remembered that you can clip through the barrier to get the moon, using a golden parsnip. So I tried, and oh god I tried. I tried over and over again, just to try and clip through. And I don't know if I was doing it wrong, but for the life of me, I just could not clip through that blasted barrier. I genuinely, and I mean genuinely, was thinking that this was the end of the journey. If I can't clip through, and I can't smash it through, how on earth would I manage to get across? I even tried other methods to absolutely no avail, so I stopped for the night to rest, and to think about how I could accomplish it. If I could accomplish it. So, this marks a point in the journey. That I had an idea. An idea that could possibly save the run. And so, I grabbed the hammer bro, climbed up those blocks of cheese, and instead of going over to the switch, I attempted to go under it baby. And so, stood at the back of it, I dug a tunnel to the beautiful, beautiful switch. And I kid you not, the relief I felt when I had gotten to that switch was unbelievable. Something I had never felt before. A sensation. So fantastic. So tingly. And so, I picked up the moon and decided I wanted to grab the nearest one I could and get out of there. So we set fire to this poor turtle's home and get the last moon we needed. I spent an hour and 30 minutes on this level, and an hour of that was dedicated to getting that singular moon. Challenging, yes, but we did do it. This is it. We actually have reached Bowser's castle, somehow against all the odds. We have reached the final lap of this long, long race. It may not be a fast sprint, but let me tell you, doing your first marathon is far more satisfying. Oh. And Bowser gets out his massive dragon! Look at that big boy! Isn't it massive? He'd been dragging that dragon around all day, am I right, gamers? Let me tell you too, this is unlike any other boss in the game. Because it takes three minutes instead of four. I wish it was more exciting than that, but honestly, it just isn't. And so we beat the dragon, which is not a euphemism, and then I tickled my ween, and then made our way to Bowser's kingdom. So, this is it. I actually can't believe we made it here. Now, I actually had no idea what to expect. This was definitely the one I was least sure about. I had no idea if it would be especially hard, or especially easy, or somewhere in between. Thankfully, this game is incredibly flexible, or I would have had no idea how to get around this part. But luckily I can just scale the wall around the coins. Watch out! Me balls fell out! But also this is the toughest Mario enemy in the game, okay? He slams his block down which allows me to climb up incredibly slowly, and then allows me to jump away. Frankly, I don't know how I did it. Unfortunately though, there's no rest for the wicked as we've reached a point with projectiles, which I tend to find are the most challenging parts of the game, as they hit rogue enemies which will give us coins. Thankfully, there's an easy solution to that. Okay, bye bye! Now I'm not saying this moonshot is a bitch to get, because it's an absolute twat. You have to be so careful not to get these coins around it, it's an absolute nightmare. It takes very precise movement and planning to avoid, and honestly, I recommend to everyone that they start with this moon, because it's clearly the most challenging of them all. Now, I did try and play it smart and just climb over the gate, but unfortunately there's nothing on the other side and attempting that is completely futile. Now I present to you problem number two. If you bomb this block with a shard in it, you get a coin. And I, I kid you not, once again, I thought this was the end of the run. After everything we went through, after all the pain and hard work, I thought that was it. But then I thought about how objects do break over time. And so I spammed the bird against it, hoping for the very best. And then, against all odds, it was enough to break it and get the moon. My nerves were riding high, so it was an absolute relief to get it. After that, we had some boss fights which was once again very easy. Just jump up and run. 
Which led us to what I believe is the final challenge. Finally. Like, I really do think that this is it. But it wasn't necessarily going to give it to me easy. So after I carefully make my way across, keeping the projectiles in mind, and make it to the next checkpoint, to come across yet another one of these big lads. Not that I think they're challenging, but unfortunately I did slip here and collected a coin. So I came back for seconds, hit it, and slid away. Don't act like you've never done it before either, you freaks. After that, the only thing that was left was climbing this large wall. While on the floor, you had slick control of Mario. Here, that was lost. You were relying on force and motion alone. But after that, I did manage to make it up. But it was only going to get harder from here. Now I had to time it and go in the right direction, which I knew would be a challenge. And unfortunately, I fell directly into those coins. And then after that, I got trapped in the corner. So I had to get swiftly out of there while I could, managing to dodge and avoid the coins. I then slid upwards and kept climbing like my life depended on it. Until I made it. That was it. The end of the climb. We had actually made it to Bowser. It's incredible. But alas. Bowser makes his escape. And so here comes the penultimate fight. I genuinely forgot about this. But if it's anything like the other bosses. It will be a breeze. The challenging part here is. That you need complete control over where you shoot the bombs. And if you accidentally knock it into a bird. Well. It's time to start again. But. Alright. He is done. Time to climb up. And smash him. And I got two coins. Bugger. So I guess what I need to do is, is what I need to do like in the tank fight from before. And force the enemies to despawn. Which will only make it more challenging, but perfectly doable. This fight, it actually took me longer than I thought. Because you could end up being so unlucky. Just look at this. Alright, this is it. The final hit. And let me tell you ladies and gentlemen, hitting him has never felt so fucking good. I had done it, I had beaten what I thought to be the final challenge. I knew after that, it would be plain sailing from here. We go pick up one more moon, and go off to cheese Bowser to the moon in the final kingdom of our story. Here we go, to the moon, the cheese planet itself. This can only be delicious. And here we are ladies and gentlemen, right through this door, this is it. Wait. Wait, what? What is this? I completely forgot about this. Fuck. We have one more challenge left. And let me tell you what a challenge this is. It was such a slow grind to get through. First, you have to avoid these tanks. And then after a few tries, you can finally make it up to this new platform. Dodging the caterpillars and making a risky jump to get over the barrier. That alone was hard enough. Never mind the rest of it. But then, we made it to the wall. As soon as I saw this wall, I knew it would only be tears ahead. And yes, the bullet bill did end up crashing into the wall, making me need to reset. So, here we go with my newfound knowledge, here we are. Making good saves, avoiding tanks, great jumps, and making it back to the fabled wall. I managed to get the bullet bill away. And, here we go, this is it. The final stretch. And then... I have no idea, genuinely, no idea where that even came from. I think this might actually be impossible. I think I would be here till I'm 80 and I'm still trying to be cool on the internet. Which is why... Hey! Don't act like you wouldn't have done it too. Now this is it. As long as Bowser doesn't give me coins, this is actually it. We made it. The final fight, the final challenge, and we got here without any coins. I genuinely am in disbelief we got this far. And now, let's stop that wedding, as a good friend Shrek would say. Oh wow, this is this is kind of kinky. I didn't know Peach was in a bondage. Man, I gotta try that when we get home. Oh shit, it's his flame attack. How am I gonna dodge this one? Uh oh. Oh, this is easy. Huh. Oh. No, 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 Bowser, Bowser, I've got a hat. You don't, I don't, I don't need, I don't need another hat. Here, you know what, here, l let me bring this back over to you. There you go, buddy, here you go. No, just, just take it. Either take this hat, or let me wedge it up your ass. You know what, fuck you. You got in between peaches, peaches for the last time. About time I mangled your own fruit, if you know what I'm saying. You bitch. We did it, we actually did it. Now, 
Knowing what comes next, I was slightly nervous that the Bowser segment would give me coins. But let me tell you, it fucking didn't. We can just charge through everything like no problem at all. Hey everyone, welcome to my brand new Minecraft Let's Play. Here we're smashing up a diamond block. It hey, that's not a diamond. What the fuck is this? This shit's like some Herobrine shit. Hey man, get me out of here. Fuck this. I'm leaving. See ya. Hey, you son of a bitch hat. What are you doing? Get back here. I'm gonna be showing my bold spot to Peach. So then Mario to see it was the CCTV footage. So him and Peach can get freaky. And then that is it. We have beaten Super Mario Odyssey. Roll the credits. We have done it. Ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe it. The entire game with zero coins. <sighs> I can't believe we've actually done it. We beat Mario Odyssey with zero coins. When I started this challenge, I really did not think I'd actually be able to beat it at all. And the fact that I even made this video at all is a complete shock. Making these longer types of videos is something that I really want to make in the future. I know that YouTube mostly relies on series, but I was always more of a film guy. So, here we are. My long ass video of me beating Super Mario Odyssey comes to an end. And I know this has gone on for longer than it should have, but I think at least this is worth sharing. I know that this was difficult in certain parts, but I genuinely think it is very doable. I'm just a regular person, and I managed with a bit of trial and error, and with building my skill up, to beat the game. Honestly, if you ever feel like you aren't good enough to attempt a challenge like this, do not bite into that fear. Because otherwise, how would any of us ever do great things? By far the hardest kingdom was Night Metro. But after a lot of trial and error, I did do it. I managed to take my time, walk it out, and I beat it. And you can too. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, then, then thank you. It, it really does mean the world, and I love you greatly. This has taken a large amount of time and, and, and energy to create, but in my opinion, hopefully, you think so too. It was absolutely worth it. Uh, thank you so much, and I really hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.